Hi, my name is Christian van Onsenot, and in this talk I would like to present our work on blue noise plots. Let's first talk about our motivation. Considering a set of univariate data like the list shown here. This could be something like daily corona cases in Ulm. When trying to understand such data, people usually consider visualizations like histograms, box plots, or violent plots to get a general understanding of the distribution of the data. These types of visualizations can help to get a general understanding, but it's not possible to read up exact values due to the involved aggregation. To overcome this, strip plots can be used as shown here. However, when multiple observations share the same value, we can't draw these observations without using the second dimension. A first approach to overcome this is to stack dots on top of each other, or to apply jitter to the non-encoding axis, as in this case the y-axis, to create a so-called jitter plot. So we move the dots in the y-axis by a random amount to reduce overplotting. However, the involved randomness can still produce overplotting, as indicated here with the red circle, or other artificial patterns. Moreover, these plots are usually not very appealing. Finally, there are so-called bee swarm plots, as shown in this example. For bee swarm plots, points are closely packed into the non-encoding axis. However, as you can see here, this packing can lead to false features or clustering. Also, you can see that this plot also fails for datasets with a larger number of points, especially when not given enough room for the plot. These particular plots are taken from a paper by Jones and others, which got wide visibility in Germany during the corona pandemic and was one key motivation of this work. So, the main question would be, how can we optimize the placement of the points in a way to avoid possible overlaps, prevent artificial patterns without the need of resampling or aggregating? Computer graphics explored blue noise. Blue noise enables producing dot patterns as the one shown here that is still random but without the drawback of points getting close to each other. One way of computing blue noise is the Lloyd relaxation algorithm. We propose a modified version of the Lloyd relaxation algorithm to extend jitter plots to blue noise plots. Blue noise plots are not only easier to read but also provide visually more appealing results. Further, we present how to automatically compute the height for the plot as well as how to apply this approach to multi-class data and how to create centrality-based blue noise plots. Finally, we present our Python-based implementation and show how you can create blue noise plots yourself. First, we would like to give a formal description of our approach. Consider the input to be x and the output to be y. The input x is associated with the x-axis of the plot, the horizontal axis encoding the data. The output of the algorithm is associated with the vertical axis. We refer to this axis as non-encoding or free, since it does not encode data. Further, we define p as a combination of x and y. For the optimization, we generate random samples in the given domain to generate so-called sites, here denoted as small queues. These queues are then used to generate Voronoi cells, here shown in different colors and denoted as capital V. For vanilla Lloyd relaxation, usually Euclidean distance is used to compute distances needed to build the Voronoi cells. For our blue noise plots, however, we use the distance metric presented here. The constant diagonal matrix emphasizes the non-encoding vertical axis. Finally, during the optimization itself, we minimize the cost of the sum 
of the expected value e of the distances for the individual dots to all the sites q in its Voronoi cell in respect to all other points p. So while this would minimize the cost, it unfortunately does not preserve the encoding horizontal axis. To demonstrate how we overcome this, we would like to demonstrate our approach in the following way. Consider jitter plots where we would use the input x and apply uniform random to generate the plot. On the other hand, we have Lloyd relaxation as described earlier. So after random initialization in line 1, we would compute Voronoi cells and iteratively replace each dot using the center of its Voronoi cell until a conversion criteria is met. As said, here we would lose the encoding dimension. Blue noise plots combine these two methods. First, as shown in line 1, we initialize the dots as with jitter plots. As explained, we would then run Lloyd relaxation on these points. However, to keep points in the encoding axis, we simply put each dot back at the initial position x after each iteration, here shown in line 10. So to conclude, we use both dimensions during optimization, but only move the dots vertically. We further present an extension to this approach. The first one being an automatic computation for the height. Usually the encoding axis is chosen to be wider than the non-encoding, since most datasets have only a smaller number of points within an interval compared to the complete dataset. It might, however, not be obvious how to choose the appropriate height for the plot given a dataset. Recommendations of distances between dots to make them visually distinguishable is a challenge on its own in the visualization community and we consider it out of the scope for this paper. However, we can still show how to compute automatic heights for the plot based on the data, which ensures a certain distance. Let's consider the following examples with 25 points. We use kernel density estimation to find the maximum density here denoted as dmax. As a distance between the points, we choose two times the marker size, here denoted as r. Now we need to stack the dots in, at this region around dmax on top of each other. By using this, we can then compute the appropriate height for the plot. Further, we support multi-class blue noise plots. There, we would optimize each class of points on its own, as well as all possible unions of all classes in the data. For centrality-based blue noise plots, we limit the movement of dots to generate blue noise plots in a similar way as the bee swarm plot. To do so, instead of using a constant height, the height is now a function of the data coordinate itself. Let's look at some of our results. Here we can see a subset of the Geyser dataset using a jitter plot, where duration of the Geyser outburst is encoded into the x-axis. Applying our blue noise approach spreads out the points and creates an even distribution. This is an example of the sleep dataset. Here we have hours of sleep encoded into the x-axis. One more example. Here is the tips dataset showing the total bill. To demonstrate our automatic height computation, we present an example of the Geisha dataset as shown before. Here we can see different sized subsets of the datasets. When keeping the height of the plot consistent, however, we can see that the plot starts to clump. Using the automatic height can overcome this, not only to prevent clumping for a larger number of data points, but also to maintain a compact visualization for smaller sized datasets. As an example for multi-class datasets, we can see an example of the penguin dataset, visualizing different bill length between genders. 
Note that the points do not only form a blue noise pattern across all points, but also for individual classes, preventing unwanted clustering effects within classes. Here we can see an example from the COVID dataset shown earlier. Visualizing different amounts of viral load between different age groups. Finally, we create centrality based blue noise plots, here from the Gapminder dataset. Here we can see that the outline of the relaxed points follows the point density to further support density estimation. Finally, here are two more examples of our blue noise plots. Since we can manipulate the minimal distance between the points, we can also use this for larger marker sizes as seen for these two ex artistic examples. The first one at the top being wins from Premier League and the second one being incomes at the German Bundestag. We analyze our results both from the graphics perspective using spectral ana analysis as well as with an overlap measurement used to analyze overdraw and plots. For the spectral analysis, we computed the power spectrum of dots for the Geisha dataset. We computed the average of 100 realizations to get the expected power spectrum. Here we can see the power spectrum for jitter plots. The jitter version produces a flat white noise spectrum. We can see a bright horizontal line due to the non-uniform density of dots along the horizontal axis. This encodes the data. We compared to a vanilla Lloyd relaxation shown here to compare to a possible upper limit of what our Lloyd relaxation based backend could achieve if not restricted to the encoding axis as described earlier. Here we can see a dark region in the center. Because we are not using a square domain, we get this unisotropic structure in the dark region. The dark horizontal line in this plot implies denser stratification of the x-axis with respect to the y-axis. Finally, this is the power spectrum for blue noise plots. As with the jitter version, we can see the horizontal line encoding the data. Apart from that, we can see that blue noise plots are substantially closer to the vanilla Lloyd relaxation than jitter. Furthermore, we did run an overlap metric on the jitter plot as well as the blue noise plots, on different datasets and different numbers of dots. The box plot here presents the results of our analysis. Examples of blue noise plots are encoded in blue, whereas jitter plots are shown in orange. Since we measure overlap, lower is better. Here we can see that blue noise plots suffer less from overlap. To evaluate blue noise plots, we also conducted two user studies. A first study was conducted to evaluate the visual preference. This study included 12 participants from a university setting, but without a particular expertise in visualization. During the study, we presented nine different datasets using our technique as well as jitter plots as a baseline. This study consisted of two parts. In a first, we presented a single plot either using blue noise or jitter. Participants had to rate their agreement on the question, do you find this plot to be visually appealing on a four point Likert scale? In the second part, we presented each dataset drawn using jitter and blue noise side by side. Here, participants were asked if they prefer one of the plots, if any. During analysis, we found that participants found our plots to be visually more appealing. When asked which of the plots they prefer, we found that blue noise plots were only preferred in 62% of cases, while 28% of cases 
participant did not have a preference towards one of the variants. During further analysis, we found a strong preference towards blue noise plots for datasets with more evenly distributed points. This indicates our approach supports these situations the most. For sparse datasets like cars and tooth, we found no preference towards one of the variants. We suppose this to happen since these plots do not suffer that strong from overdraw compared to the jitter version. During our second experiment, our goal was to find if observers are more accurate in estimating distributions using blue noise plots compared to jitter plots. Therefore, we conducted a crowdsourced user study by using the Amazon Mechanical Turks master's population. During this study, participants were presented with an arrangement of points as shown here. On the left, we presented a point-based distribution, either drawn using jitter or blue noise plots. On the right, we presented two reference distributions, drawn using a line encoding. In a two alternative forced choice, participants were asked which of the two line-based encodings on the right correspond to the point-based encoding on the left. The variants on the right were produced by using B-spline curves with five uniformly placed control points. One of the control points was moved by a given offset. To find the offset threshold at which level of difference, participants were able to correctly identify the reference, we conducted a staircase procedure. During analysis, we found a significantly smaller threshold for blue noise plots, indicating a more accurate estimation of distributions using our approach. Now we would like to show you how you can create blue noise plots yourself. It's as simple as loading some data into a pandas data frame and handing it to our blue noise plot function. To conclude, within this paper we present blue noise plots as a replacement for jitter plots. Blue noise plots prevent overlap and other visual artifacts like non-existing patterns introduced by random jittering. During our studies, we could show that blue noise plots enable more accurate distribution estimation and are visually more appealing. Further, we present how the height of the plot can be automatically computed and how our approach can be extended for multi-class blue noise plots and how to create centralized blue noise plots to support density estimation. Finally, we presented how to use our Python-based implementation to create blue noise plots. In the future, we would like to investigate 3D blue noise plots, where we would use two encoding dimensions while optimizing the third. While 3D plots are considered hard to interpret, possible applications could be virtual reality or tangible visualizations. Under these QR codes, you will find links to the Python implementation of Blue Noise Plots as well as to our project website. Thank you.